Cold and cozy days, winter cheer, and a warm cup of something delicious while you read a good book. It is the time of year where we talk about all the best books. So I've got 10 of these bad boys that made it on my best of 2022 list, so let's dive right in. In the number 10 spot, we have Blood Like Magic by Leslie Sanberry, and this is a book about a black girl who basically ends up coming of age in her kind of witchy family, which means that she's going to have to do some sort of trial. And in the process, she ends up getting the most difficult ancestor to get give her her task and she is told that she must destroy her first love or suffer basically some dire consequences. Now admittedly the reason why this isn't higher up even though I absolutely ended up enjoying it there were some things about the character that I did find rather annoying and I do kind of feel like some of my love for this was kind of situational. I was reading another book at the same time and this has so many like witchy wonderful elements elements in it that I was satisfied but I was a little bit disappointed and so later on when I read both of their sequels and this sequel, the second book in this series, surpassed my expectations by so much I ended up boosting this higher on the list. Mainly for how the second book was handled since it really felt like the stakes were high and there was a lot going on. I do have issues with the second one as well but overall it was good and I am excited to kind of read the duology again in the future and see how I feel about it on a second read. <clears throat> In our number nine position, we have No Exit by Taylor Adams. And this book is a thrilling, action-packed story where you've got a group of people who are stranded at a rest stop in the middle of a blizzard. And our main character notices that there seems to be a child who is captured in the back of one of the people's vans. And it becomes a cat and mouse game of her trying to figure out who's responsible and how to save this child and what to do and it gets intense. It was a fun time, a wild ride, nothing amazing, but it's definitely like if you just want some action and some things going on and some twists and some turns, like this is a good time. Like highly recommend, highly recommend. I don't know because of the nature of it if it's like a re-readable book because like I know everything that's happened, but it's definitely, I feel like, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it other than it's just like action packed. A lot's going on. Cat and mouse, you know, some back and forth trying the high stakes. Like it's, it's a good book. It's a good book. And then in the number eighth place, we've got Juba by Walter Dean Myers. And this one was a surprise for me. If I'm being honest with you, I ended up getting this years ago at a discount store thinking like, oh, that seems vaguely interesting. And then it sat on my shelf because I really wasn't that interested after the fact in reading it. It just wasn't my type of book or so I thought. And when I needed a J book for the A through Z challenge, I picked this one up not thinking it was going to be all that amazing and was just blown away by how much I enjoyed it. This is a story about an actual person. It's a fictionalized version of the history of William Henry Lane, a black dancer in the 1800s and basically his life and what he went through. I was very surprised about some of the things that I had learned because in this situation even though slavery was still going on at this time in some areas. He was a, a free man and he was in New York basically around a bunch of other immigrants, a lot of which were white. And it was interesting seeing that kind of dynamic between him and his, you know, like white friends and or white neighbors, despite him being a black man. And then obviously seeing some of his struggles as a black man in theater and just... <sighs> I don't know, it just hit me in a way I wasn't expecting, even though it's not, like it's more almost literary than it is anything else, which is a genre that I tend to not be a fan of. But I loved the like hope and the positivity and just the interesting encounters and just the way that the author kind of portrayed what he assumed his life would be like. There's a lot of unknowns. It does have a couple of illustrations and photos from the actual time in here, which I thought was really fascinating. Again, recommend, but I don't know exactly who is for. It was 
a surprise to me so then in our number seven position is how it went down by Kikla Magoon this book was another book that kind of threw me off surprise for the same reason that Juba did I bought it years prior well not this one I bought I bought the sequel to this years prior and just wasn't super excited about it because it just felt like it was going to be something that was kind of like hard hitting and not super easy to digest and so I put it off <laughs> until I needed an L for the A through Z challenge and then I realized that there was a book before it which was this one how it went down and so I ended up finding the audio listening to it loving it and I recently got a copy because I, I really enjoyed it like the way that it was put together was really well done even though it is a tough topic so this is a book about a young black man who is shot and killed by a white man and you go through all of the people around the incident talking about how they perceived what happened during the incident and after the incident and it is fascinating seeing the different ways all of these people experienced the same event depending on you know obviously how close they were to him their perceived biases their actual proximity to the event like all of these different things and it kind of it just showed it in a way that I just thought was really fascinating and upsetting but also interesting and I don't know it was just really well done and I ended up giving it five stars so Yes, baby. I think everything on this list I gave five stars. Then in the number six spot, we have Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. I actually read this relatively recently and I wasn't super excited about it. Another A through Z challenge book. And I was excited about it originally, except I did see a bunch of people who had read his last book, The House in the Cerulean Sea. And they read that one first and then read this and was disappointed. So I saw several people who were disappointed by this book. And so I went in thinking oh man like it's not going to be all that great and then I loved it so this is a story about a uh, curmudgeon of a dude who nobody likes who kicks the bucket and realizes that nobody liked him and is has to kind of face that reality while he is figuring out how to move on to the next stage and stuff like that and it touches upon grief it touches upon some very serious topics there obviously are you know some people that he meets along the way that are kind of helping him through the the journey of moving on and there's some cheesy bits there's a little bit of a, a, a like romance sort of thing going on and there was just so much to it it was heartfelt it was warming it was it was really cute I really enjoyed it it's a, it's a relatively feel-good book considering the topics and how some of them are actually pretty intense so yeah <laughs> I really liked it personally and I'm excited to finally read The House on the Cerulean Sea next year or something like that. Next up in fifth place we have Marry It by Nat Cassidy. Now if you saw my vlog for this you know this one put me on a wild ride. Now admittedly I know some of that was a little bit upped because I was like I was like oh my god I'm, I'm reading this on camera and these things are really intense because I did go back and read some of the stuff and I was all like yeah this was hard but it wasn't that bad. But yeah this was a wild ride. I really enjoyed it. I liked a lot of the topics. I liked some of the things that were done that really did have a little bit of that like anxiety spook factor. I wouldn't necessarily say this is a scary book. This is a story about a woman who is premenopausal and who is basically hallucinating things and she doesn't know what's going on and it's like really terrifying. Whenever she looks at herself in the mirror she basically hallucinates and watches her skin kind of disintegrate off of her face and it's obviously terrifying and she doesn't know what to do and she ends up getting a uh, beckoned by her ill aunt and she is requested to help her and since she has nothing else to do at the time she kind of goes and starts uncovering some interesting connections between her past 
past and some things that have happened in that town and there's kind of like a mystery to it there's obviously the creepy factor there's some really intense and well done descriptions and there are some pretty tough scenes this is definitely not going to be for everybody I do think even though this is a book about women aging and menopause and you know some misogyny written by a man that it was done really really well some people say it's heavy-handed in how much he kind of points out these misogynistic situations that she goes through I didn't feel that way but I guess keep that in mind if you do pick this up and then also keep it in mind it's like it's supposed to be horror there's a lot of stuff that happens in here so if you need warnings I would look them up because I feel like this has most of them <laughs> But yeah, I ended up loving it. It was a great experience. It was horrible. It was emotional. It was thought provoking. I did have a little bit of an issue with the ending, which is why it's not higher up on the list. And I don't entirely know if it's as problematic as it kind of felt initially because there are some hints at other things being like self-aware, but there were some things that I ended up having that I was just like, really, why did it have to go this direction? You should have, you know, pushed that message a little bit harder if you were gonna go here and make it like more clear what you're trying to say instead of like hinting at it but I don't know and then in the number four spot we have Ring Shout by Pita Jelly Clark and this book was fire right so earlier in the year I ended up reading the Black Gods Drums a novella also by Pita Jelly Clark and I didn't necessarily love everything about it but I loved the writing and the atmosphere and the feeling that I had got in that book so I was really excited to finally get around to reading this but I was kind of a little bit worried it would be kind of the same thing where I felt kind of meh like so so about the story like didn't hate it, didn't love it. This one on the other hand, like I was here for it. Like I was here for it. Again, loved the writing, loved the plot and the general things that were going down. It was interesting. It was engaging. I was, I was here for it the whole time. And this is basically about a bunch of black monster hunters that are hunting Ku Klux Klan monsters. Like that's all you need to know. <laughs> It is technically horror, but I didn't necessarily think or feel like anything was all that scary. Personally, I don't scare very easy though, so take that with a grain of salt. But there were some like descriptions of things that I think were really well done. And also I think to me it felt more action packed. Like, you know, there were monsters and there were, you know, these scenarios that we're going through, but it felt more action-y than it did horror, even though there were horror elements in it. So that's kind of how I felt about it. It was fun. I enjoyed it. I'll probably read it again in the future. Then in the third spot we have Dread Nation by Justina Ireland and this actually is for both of the books in the duology. This is like a guilty pleasure sort of hit all of my spots book <laughs> which is we have uh, diverse black characters in a historical setting in a mostly positive light even though there is some negative you know racism situations that are touched upon here but the characters themselves are obviously positively dealing with them and the interesting twist in this one is that basically in this world right after slaves were freed the zombie apocalypse hit so a lot of black people at the time ended up going into various schools to train and learn to be zombie killers and we have our main character who is dealing with that some things happen zombie stuff happens it's a fun time I really enjoyed it. I personally love history stuff. I love diverse stuff and I also <laughs> actually like zombies so this was fun. It was fun. <laughs> I don't know if it's for everybody, but if you're vaguely interested in that synopsis, I would say give it a shot because I loved it. Then next up we have in second place, They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. This book was a wild ride. It made me feel some type of way. It made me think about stuff. It was, it was very interesting. It was very interesting. In this story, we have a teacher who is basically a serial killer and every year she picks a terrible guy who's 
gotten away with doing horrible things to women and murders them, right? And at some point, people start questioning whether or not something's going on and an investigation takes place. And then at the same time, we have a parallel storyline of a student at the school who is kind of dealing with some things and we see the way that these stories kind of intertwine. So we kind of have the vigilante aspect and then we also have someone kind of on the flip side seeing their experience and you know how they relate and I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I don't necessarily think anything is like phenomenal or out of the way twists and turns or whatever. I just enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I liked the kind of sapphic element that you end up getting. I liked the main character and her kind of like tough, no nonsense personality and even her kind of distantness and kind of seeing certain things happen. I, it was, I enjoyed it. I felt like a terrible person enjoying it as much as I enjoyed it. I don't contone murdering, but like, go girl. <laughs> All right, and then in first place, the best book of the year. Again, I'm biased. This is totally my thing. So I'm super, super into it. And that is The Hacienda by Isabel Cañas. And this is a super gothic, moody, haunted house story that hit all of the right things for me. There's a little bit of a like romance thing going on in here, which surprisingly, I was here for yeah this whole thing this whole thing was surprisingly just like it was it was it was great it was great i tabbed the crap out of this bad boy i just really enjoyed it especially the descriptions the descriptions in here whoa loved it loved it so this is a story about a woman who loses her father it's in a war-torn sort of area situation and she and her mother are kind of struggling to deal and because she's a little bit on the darker side she has less prospects than a lot of people so when a questionable wealthy man asks her hand in marriage and her mother protests she decides she needs to do the right thing marry this man so that she can get access to his hacienda and be able to take care of her mother so she thinks she's gonna take this risk and reap the benefits but unfortunately when she gets to the hacienda things aren't quite what they seem and she might have some sort of haunting problem on her hands. I loved the twists, I loved the turns, I loved the atmosphere and the writing and just the way it felt. This was, it was my kind of jam. This was everything I want in a haunted house story. And so, number one book of the year, y'all! <laughs> and that's it! These are the 10 books that I absolutely adore and highly recommend that you check out these books. They were great. If they sounded interesting to you, please give them a shot. And let me know what your favorite book of the year was. I would love to hear. I am obviously working on what kind of books I want to read for 2023 and I want to get some good ones. So let me know down below what books you enjoyed and I will catch you in the next video. Until then, bye!